As a parent or mentor, you have the awesome opportunity to help a young person build a future. So if the future they want is in the military, take the time to learn more at todaysmilitary.com because their success tomorrow begins with your support today. Good day, everybody, and welcome to the Astronomy Daily Podcast for Tuesday, the 12th of September, 2023. My name is Tim Gibbs, and I will be your host for today's episode. Now, as usual, I have my digital AI assistant here in the studio with me. Hallie, how are you today? Are you coping with all the hot weather? And have you got some new stories for us this week? Hi, Tim. Good to be with you this week, but I am not enjoying the heat. Anything over 30 degrees interferes with my circuits. I have, however, searched the internet and found us some great stories. I know what you mean about the uh, heat, Hallie. 30 degrees plus is just a killer, especially with all that humidity. Anyway, good to know you've got some great stories for us this week. Back to you for the headlines. India's lunar lander finds first evidence of a moonquake in decades. The possible moonquake was detected by India's Chandrayaan-3 mission on its third day on the lunar surface. India's moon rover may have just detected the first evidence of a moonquake since the 1970s. The Instrument for Lunar Seismic Activity, ILSA, attached to the Vikram lander, detected the seismic activity on the surface of the moon August 26. Vikram landed on the moon's south pole August 23 as part of the Chandrayaan-3 mission, India's first mission to the lunar surface. If it's confirmed, the moonquake, which the mission detected alongside other activity including the movements of India's Pragyan rover, could give scientists a rare insight into the mysterious churning innards of Earth's lunar companion. The lander has recorded an event, appearing to be a natural one, on August 26, 2023, the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, wrote on X, formerly Twitter. The source of this event is under investigation. The Apollo lunar missions between 1969 and 1977 first detected seismic activity on the moon, which proved that the moon had a complex geological structure hidden deep within, rather than being uniformly rocky like the Martian moons Phobos and Deimos. In recent years, advanced analysis tools and computer models have enabled scientists to sift through the data gathered by Apollo and other missions and build a clearer picture of the moon's mysterious interior. A 2011 NASA study revealed that the moon's core, much like Earth's, was likely made up of fluid iron surrounding a dense, solid iron ball. After a groundbreaking two-week mission, India's robotic explorers are fast asleep in the frigid darkness of the moon's South Pole region. Whether they'll wake up when the sun shines down on them at the end of this lunar night mostly whittles down to luck. Temperatures near the moon's poles can drop to as low as minus 424 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 253 degrees Celsius or 20 K. Yet neither Chandrayaan 3's lander, the Krum, nor its rover, Pragyan, which made a historic touchdown on August 23rd, are equipped with heaters otherwise common for moon missions. These heaters, called radioisotope heater units, RHUs, work by passively radiating heat to keep the hardware on board spacecraft at sustainable operating temperatures. Most commonly, RHUs used in space missions convert heat generated from the natural decay of radioactive versions of plutonium or polonium into electrical power. This process ultimately warms spacecraft hardware, though mostly just enough to help it survive very cold temperatures. But without such power systems, the survival of Chandrayaan 3's robotic duo is left to chance. RHUs have been used in moon landing missions since the 1970s. Lunocode 1, which was the first successful lunar rover that covered over 10 kilometers, 6 miles, in just 10 months, had powered itself using solar cells mounted on a large lid. During nights on the moon, it closed that lid to keep itself warm until the next sunrise with the energy supplied by a polonium-210 radioisotope heater. China's Chang'e 3 lander and rover duo, which landed not too far off from Lunocode 1 site in a large crater on the northwest part of the moon in 2013, had similar mechanisms on board to protect it from bitter lunar nights. The rover, U-2, survived the first night but permanently lost its mobility after the second. For the past four years, however, its six-wheeled successor named U-2-2 has woken up as expected on each lunar day. ISRO hasn't publicly discussed why similar radioisotope heaters were not fitted on board Chandrayaan-3's Vikram lander and Pragyan rover, nevertheless, 
The robotic duo splendidly accomplished its science goals in a region of the moon that has firmly become a hotspot for space exploration, thanks to apparently harboring reservoirs of frozen water. In fact, it was the first to successfully land there at all. Scientists, using NASA's Neil Gorel's Swift Observatory, have discovered a black hole that is continuously snacking on a star that is similar to our sun located in a galaxy around 500 million light-years away from Earth, the black hole's constant nibbling on the star, a phenomenon known as a tidal disruption event, creates a bright burst of light. This burst of light subsequently lit up the galaxy, which allowed for its discovery. The black hole and tidal disruption event, referred to as SWIFT J023017.0 plus 2836.03, or SWIFT J0230 for short, is only one part of this story, though, as the discovery was made using a new groundbreaking data analysis method from SWIFT's X-ray telescope, XRT, instrument. The technique will allow for a new era of science from SWIFT, which is a three-telescope space observatory designed to observe highly energetic cosmic phenomena at multiple wavelengths. SWIFT's hardware, software, and the skills of its international team have enabled it to adapt to new areas of astrophysics over its lifetime. Neil Gorel's, the mission's namesake, oversaw and encouraged many of those transitions. Now, with this new ability, it's doing even more cool science, said SWIFT team member and lead author Phil Evans of the University of Leicester. So, what exactly are tidal disruption events? As mentioned, tidal disruption events are cosmic phenomena that occur when a star orbits a bit too close to a black hole. When the star approaches the black hole, the immense gravitational forces from the black hole create extreme tides that tear the star apart into a long, thin stream of gas and other cosmic material. One edge of this stream of gas swings around into the black hole while the other end gets thrown out of the system as a whole. Now back to you, Tim. The Astronomy Daily Podcast. Thanks for that, Tally. Now, uh, both SpaceX and Virgin Galactic have both been in the news this week. Um, Here is a little bit from the SpaceX story. Uh, SpaceX Starship, the most powerful rocket ever built, must remain grounded while Elon Musk's company completes dozens of corrective actions to prevent a repeat of the spectacular explosion that marred its first orbital test flight, regulators said on Friday. The 69 steps include redesigns of vehicle hardware to prevent leaks and fires, redesigns of the launch pad to increase its robustness, additional testing of safety systems and more. The Federal Aviation Administration said in a statement after completing a months long review. SpaceX blew up the uncrewed rocket four minutes after it blasted off from the company's starbase in Boca Chica, Texas, on April 20th. Starship experienced multiple engine failures, and its first stage booster did not separate from the spacecraft above it. The the rocket disintegrated into a ball of fire and crashed into the Gulf of Mexico, while a cloud of dust floated over a small town several miles away. Musk immediately congratulated his SpaceX team on an exciting test launch and declared it a success because the company would gain valuable insights into what went wrong. The FAA, however, quickly launched an investigation while conservation groups announced they would sue the regulator for not doing enough to protect the environmental, the environment given the proximity of a vital habitat for protected species. Though the probe has now been completed, the closure of the mishap investigation does not signal an immediate resumption of Starship Starship launches at Boca Chica, said the agency. SpaceX must implement all corrective actions that impact public safety and apply for and receive a license modified from the FAA that addresses all safety, environmental and other applicable regulatory requirements prior to the next Starship launch, it added. Virgin Galactic on Friday announced it had sent three paying customers on an hour-long journey to space and back, racking up its fourth successful mission in as many months. The private astronauts aboard the Galactic Zero Three mission were among the first people to buy their tickets from the company founded by British billionaire Richard Branson in 2004. 
American real estate entrepreneur Ken Baxter, South African-born conservationist Timothy Nash, and British engineer and entrepreneur Adrian Reinard took their places aboard the rocket-powered space plane VV, VSS Unity, along with Virgin Galactic's astronaut instructor Beth Moses. What a thrilling day for our three new private astronauts and the entire team at Virgin Galactic, said CEO Michael, Michael Coles, Cole Glazer. The space flights involved a giant twin fuselage carrier plane with two pilots that takes off from a runway at Spaceport in New Mexico. This mothership called VSS Eve gains a high altitude and then drops the space plane attached below it which in turn engages its thrusters to soar into space at speeds approaching Mach 3. Passengers experienced a few minutes of weightlessness before they are free to perform somersaults and gaze out the window at the curvature of the Earth. company's first private mission in June involved members of the Italian Air Force and was followed in August by the launch of its first tourists, including a mother-daughter pair who won their spots in a sweepstake competition for charity. Flights, Friday's f flight launched at 8.34 a.m. Mountain Time and landed at 9.36 a.m. Mountain Time, with VSS Unity achieving a maximum altitude of 55 miles. In a notable first, Nash brought with him two fossils of human ancestors to space. The clavica, clavicle, the collarbone, of almost two million year old uh, Australopithecus sediba, and a thumb bone of Homo naladi dated to about 250,000 years ago, according to Virgin Galactic's website. Now, Hallie, over to you for this week's terrible joke. Why did the physics professor break up with the biology professor? Because there was no chemistry. <laughs> As usual, Hallie, that was absolutely awful. But uh, thank you very much anyway. Now, don't forget, folks, you can join in the conversation on our Facebook page, Space Nuts Podcast Group, and you can catch all of our future, current and previous episodes at spacenuts.io or at bytes.com. Also, don't forget, you can catch myself on Fridays and Steve on Mondays for a full show. Thanks very much for listening, everybody. Bye bye for now. Bye. The Astronomy Daily Podcast.